Welcome back to IA Medical. Today you're in for a treat because today we are covering what might be the most confusing vaccine guidelines in medicine. Yep, the pneumococcal vaccination guidelines. Fresh out of the research labs and hot out of the CDC press, the 2025 updates are here and we're going to make them stick. Not like polysaccharides, but like conjugates with memory. So why do we care about strep pneumo so much? Isn't it like a normal flora that we all have? Yes, that is correct. Streptococcus pneumoniae lives normally peacefully in the upper respiratory tract, especially here in the nasopharynx of most adults and children. Colonization vary by age. Kids have the most prevalence of strep pneumo in their nasopharynx. Adults have less of it, but still detectable in the nasopharynx. Here's the catch. If this peaceful roommate that we all have strep pneumo, if it breaches the mucosal barriers and our immune response, it becomes an opportunistic pathogen. The real reason why we care about strep pneumo so much, it's because it's the number one vaccine preventable cause of community acquired pneumonia, meningitis, invasive pneumococcal disease, including bacteremia and sepsis and otitis media. And this is worldwide, not just in US. And although vaccination has decreased incidence, pneumococcal pneumonia is still the number one bacterial cause for community acquired pneumonia globally. And these are the facts. So how does strep pneumo becomes from a peaceful roommate to a killer? First, it uses its pili and choline binding proteins to stick to epithelial cells. Then comes the polysaccharide capsule, the main virulence factor of strep pneumo. It blocks phagocytosis, basically acts as a shield against our immune defenses. And a fun fact, how many serotypes do you think the polysaccharide capsule has? And when I say serotypes, I mean the variations in the chemical structure of the polysaccharide capsule. 1, 10, 20, 30? What do you think? Well, the unlucky number is over 90 serotypes. And some serotypes are really extra, extra aggressive and deadly, like serotype 3, for example. I like to imagine strep pneumo without the polysaccharide capsule around it as a sugar cube waiting to be eaten. So we have the strep pneumo attached with its pili to your mucosal cells with its polysaccharide capsule preventing it from our immune defenses. Now it needs a little bit help from your side, like a viral co-infection or trauma or immune suppression and then it invades. And how does it invade? Well, it has a special pore-forming toxin called pneumolysin. And once it's in, it starts destroying the cells, causes inflammation, tissue injury, recruits neutrophils. And after that, it's easy. You can imagine it goes into your bloodstream, it travels to your meninges, to your lungs, and then becomes a battle of who is stronger, the strep pneumo or your immune system. And that's why we vaccinate. So what do we vaccinate with? Our pneumococcal vaccines come in two flavors, the PCV type and the PPSV type. PCV stands for pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Basically, we take a weak polysaccharide antigen from the polysaccharide capsule of the strep pneumo and we linked it with a strong protein to activate your T cells. And once you activate your T cells, they start producing IgG mediated immune response, which is the long lasting immune response that creates memory cells and that protects you for a long, long time. I'm sure you all remember and love your step one journey. And I'm sure you all remember that the IgM antibodies were the first responders. M for mainly first responders. The IgG antibodies were the grown-up response. So if you wish the IgM antibodies start the fight and IgG finishes it and writes the memoirs. So the PCV vaccines are doing a great job. They're creating this long lasting immunity. So how many PCV vaccines do we really have? Currently we have the PCV 13, the PCV 15, the PCV 20 and the PCV 21 vaccines and the number after PCV stands for the number of serotypes they contain. The PPSV vaccine stands for pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine and we have only one of this type, the PPSV23. It has 23 purified polysaccharides from major strep pneumo serotypes and covers most strains that are responsible for the invasive pneumococcal disease. Well, how does the PPSV vaccine work exactly? 
Well, it directly stimulates your B cells to produce IgM antibodies, which promotes opsonization and complement mediated killing. So which vaccine is better, the PCV one or the PPSV one? Well, if you ask Robert Austrian, who described the notorious triad of pneumonia, meningitis and endocarditis, all caused by strep pneumo, I'm sure he would have told you that he would prefer the PCV vaccine. Why? Well, as we said, the PCV vaccine stimulates your T cells to produce memory cells down the line which will protect you for a long time. It also reduces the nasopharyngeal carriage of strep pneumo and overall it's a real game changer. And chances are you haven't heard of the Austrian syndrome because it's so rare now due to the effectiveness of our pneumococcal vaccines. Alright, so let's jump in into the vaccination guidelines with the newest updates from 2025. We'll divide our patients again in two groups the 19 to 49 years old and the 50 and above. Wait, 50? Well, 50 is the new 65 now, based on the latest vaccination guidelines from 2025. So now you can start vaccinating your patients at the age of 50 instead of waiting to 65. For our patients between the ages of 19 to 49 with risk factors, the ones with chronic diseases like chronic lung disease, chronic liver disease, CKD, CHF, diabetes, current tobacco abuse, alcohol abuse, the immunocompromised patients with HIV, Hep C, sickle cell patients, the ones with cochlear implants and CSF leaks who are more prone to developing meningitis, the ones with their spleen removed, patients with active cancer, multiple myeloma. What we have been using until now is to give them the PCV15 first followed by the PPSV23 one year later. But now we have the new vaccines, the PCV20 and 21. And the good thing about those vaccines is that you can give them one time dose and be done with it. And I will be using PCV20 and PCV21 interchangeably because the PCV20 is currently the most researched one and the most available one. Next year, I'm sure this will be the PCV21. And if you were wondering, why did we have to come up with new vaccines? Well, as the strep pneumo evolves, we have to evolve with it. Even though the PCV13 and 15 were and are still very effective, they left gaps behind. So we took the PCV13 and 15 serotypes and we added some more serotypes that were causing really serious infections in patients and came up with the PCV20 and 21, which is good news for us and bad news for the strep pneumo. And the other age group, the people 50 and above, healthy people or with risk factors, we can give them again the PCV15 followed by the PPSV23 one year later. Wait, that sounds familiar. Okay, that's easy. Or you can actually give them again the PCV2021 vaccine one time dose and be done with it. So the vaccination guidelines that I just talked about were for people who were pneumococcal vaccine naive. They have never received pneumococcal vaccine before. So now comes the tricky part. If the patient has received the PPSV23 vaccine, then revaccinate them one year later with the PCV2021 vaccine. And please remember, don't revaccinate people that have received the PCV20 vaccine. Like I said, one and done. And if your patient has received the PCV15 and the PPSV23 vaccine, you can revaccinate them five years after the last vaccine with the PCV20 or 21. All right, so that's that. Thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Please subscribe to our channel if you like our content. Also consider joining our membership. We have so many videos that are exclusive for members and I'm sure you're going to love and I'll see you on the next one.